Good morning, amazing world of awesomeness. This is your host, Greg Arturo with Free Talk Now. Being this is our first episode, I might as well give a little bit of a download to how things flow around here and that we intuit the news. We intuit the now, as in what's going on right here, right now, planet Earth, big game, small game, little here, big here, whatever you want to phrase it, it's just happening right now. And so the big thing in the news today was in Southern California, there was this like comet-like thing seen through the sky. It was reported previously the day before, as I read in the news, immediately thought when I read it, being this is a bunch of baloney. And that they talked about how LAX was rerouting all of its traffic for a whole week over the Pacific approach, which usually is how you approach when you come into LAX, as I've done myself. I just spent the last six months in LAX, and now currently up in Nevada City, Northern California. Uh, and because uh, it's a lot quieter coming over the Pacific than flying over central LA. Well, they were warning all the residents, you know, for the next week it's going to be a little bit noisier, uh, being all traffic's coming in from eastern approaches. However, that's not what, like, everyone freaked out over was the noise, it was the visualizations, this massive comet-like thing seen in the sky. Well, the U.S. military said it was a Trine missile. I, I highly doubt it's a Trine missile. And so... <laughs> It reminds me of like the Norwegian spiral that appeared a few years ago, and well, uh, this other atmospheric phenomenon. Those are the two questions that like I have to ask myself first when I I'm confronted with the story yesterday and today, and that supposedly U.S. military training exercise, like with my own experience, uh, as like from you know running around with the free thinker scene down in L.A. and and maneuvering my way through the crowds. There's, there's always this consistent talk about the military base out around Malibu, an underground, submarine, underwater facility. And uh, maybe that has something in conjunction with this idea, because that's a connection, that's a pattern. So with the news here, we talk about patterns and how those patterns build toward our intuition, making connections, being like, you know what? I'm feeling something here. It's something tangible because it's also partially multidimensional. Most of the news is one-dimensional. It doesn't get multidimensional. It doesn't even, like, it doesn't leave, you know, the literal rational thought perception of humankind, which is, like, a third of the, the, the perception. Like, you're missing two-thirds of the entire perception. you got the whole emotional perception and the spiritual perception, but we're just stuck with the rational. And so we're going to download you with all three, and then we get fourth-way news, as Gurdjieff might say. And so... The two questions I'm asked myself, you know, first thing when I hear this is, what is the military really hiding um, with this uh, in terms of their technology or, say, a natural incident? And that question about the natural incident is what I lean more toward in that it is some form of natural phenomena and that a lot of the natural phenomena around Earth isn't fully understood, as I've seen myself, interesting atmospheric uh, phenomena, such as uh, balls of lightning. Uh, they're like plasmatic balls floating in the air, like floating LEDs. It's actually really, really, really cool. And uh, in common folklore, it's called Will of the Wisp. I mean, that's one, you know, many things I've observed that are just like a little off kelter with the current perception of humankind, at least scientifically, and like, there's some weird things out there, and, well, my friends even last night here in Nevada City saw that blue thing, they showed me a picture of it on their phone, being like, we saw it up here, and so there's reports as far as the also Las Vegas, and so pretty much the western seaboard saw this. This was not a Triton missile, if you've been seen this extensively, I just like, bullshit. Um, we're gonna call the bullshit card on this one. Uh, and so, the thing then, like, like, I'm 99% sure that's not the story, but the thing is, what is the real story? That's the fun. That's the imagination. I mean, like, some people like to slam on conspiracy theory, but, man, you can be told the news. It's like, screw that. Imagine the news. Intuit the news. What's really going on? And so, it, it's, it's the, the first thing that honestly like comes into my perception so clearly when I like I see that video and and what I'm observing is that it's very it's very plasma like it's very plasmatic there's just no doubt in my body that's going on the question is what is causing that plasmatic visualization it's almost like aurora borealis because I mean that's a plasma phenomenon but this is different this is something moving through the atmosphere of the earth um, 
it, from what it looked like, it's definitely moving within the atmosphere, but you're having a highly, highly charged gradient of electrical energy moving through that air. And so, uh, I mean, that's when, when it comes to a lot, a lot of the interesting uh, technologies that Tesla worked with and that you hear about with scalar systems uh, such as HARP, uh, you've seen much of these interesting phenomena of light uh, around such systems. And so I, I wouldn't doubt it for one bit. I, I wouldn't doubt it for, you know, at all. I mean, everything has its own connections. Like, they started chemtrailing here in Nevada City a few days ago, and for like two days straight, and I got the sniffles. I made this awesome video on YouTube that went, went, it didn't go viral. My world, it went viral. Let's just say that. And uh, that in those two days, I got the sniffles when they're there. It's like, huh, I don't ever get sick because I eat pretty much a vegan raw diet. And my immune system is great, except when they chemtrail and they dump nagalase in the systems. The nagalase causes the GC MAF not to function effectively as a protein as it consumes all the sugars and my immune system is weakened. And then other viral pathogens and things within my environment are able to enter my org field. And so uh, it is currently my function, uh, my ongoing process to eradicate this thought construct that chemtrails affect me negatively and uh, restabilize my immune system to its full potential. And that's where it's like there's this great idea with naglase. And there's, there's naglase is found throughout the human body um, and it's part of you know, the natural sugar metabolism process, but then there's distorted forms such as in viruses and vaccines and chemtrails. Uh, and so like, as in the natural viral community does produce it, but it's also being found artificially in our environment. And it causes the to suck up the sugar so the protein can't work as effectively that supports the immune system. That's basically summing it up. Uh, and so everyone's been like focused on the concept of like, well, it's taking more GC math, which is great. It's like supplementing like 5-HTP create serotonin. But I'm always, in my opinion, it's like, well, what do you do diet and natural wise to create more serotonin? So what do you do diet and natural wise to create more GC math? Well, the one thing we could use is vibrational homeopathy, such as royal rife frequencies, to vibrate the resonant frequency of this distorted naglase to break it up, to then allow the human body to come back online, produce a GC math, and like take on like 50 of the world's diseases, pretty much like that, such as autism and cancer, out the door. And uh, yeah, and so that is the rabbit hole of today, where we went from uh, Trident non-existent uh, missile to GC map and Nagalase. I think that one's gonna be coming up a lot and I might be having some interesting people on the show to talk about. It. But today we have Brett Worsowski with new map, a holographic geometric fractal interface to connect with each other and in the now. So without further ado, Brett. So we're on the air here with Brett Worsowski with uh, Team New Map. And New Map has been a project uh, involving uh, a new social media network and it's it's even more than that in terms of how to utilize that as an interface and uh, a uh, Brett how about, how about you describe what new map is well we still don't have our elevator pitch down yet but what we're calling it is first of all it's a platform so it includes an internet technology social technologies and it's about collaboration, co-creation, um, abundance, and inner health and inner, inner wellness for us all so we can then manifest and realize all the projects and dreams and passions in a unified way together. So it's a bunch of different things as a platform, and the main part is this internet technology, which right now we're saying it's a new map is a mind like internet technology revolutionizing communication collaboration and co-creation so that's what we're up to and it's based on um something we call a holonic it's h-o-l-o-n-i-c um network holonic database and interface and as you're familiar with gregor holons are simply something that's a whole and a part simultaneously now the word holon has a much deeper scientific meaning and that goes in different directions but we're using it from a holistic perspective, that it's a whole and a part simultaneously, just like everyone here is, and all the projects we have, and all the intentions and resources and visions we have, we all know we're interconnected and interdependent. So therefore, we're creating a technology that reflects that naturally. So the system is circular, 
it's a Russian doll system where the holons go within each other. And it's easy to experience how we're all interconnected using holons as an interface and as a database. It's really easy to understand that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And it's really easy to create your own expression through a new map as well as being part of the larger system. So it's a good blend of, of me's and we's coming together. So if we could take uh, what you just said and go a little bit down another route, it relates to something we were already talking about in that what, what you just shared forth is, is a lot in regards to systems theories and, and almost com uh, computer science itself in terms of uh, organizational systems, but then how there is a metaphysical aspect in, in relation to these systems. And so one thing you spoke about uh, it, uh, yesterday was the concept of Gaia. And I've been talking about Gaia uh, a lot myself. And this is, this is outside, you could say, the pagan belief systems, but it's, it's seeing uh, the Earth in its essence as, in terms of systems theory. And some people view this you know, very technologically or scientifically, but there is this deep philosophical spiritual aspect in relation uh, to what you're doing, to the, this idea of systems theory thinking, but with a, a spiritual focus. Would you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, what you posted yesterday in your video, you were talking about getting out of this idea of self-reliance and back into the community, that we all are connected and dependent on one another, and the bigger picture of Gaia. So what I wrote back on the thread was um, one of the new map co-creators, Andrea, was just talking about us changing our communications to go from the abstract things I was just talking about into something that's more understandable and relatable. So that was the idea of gamifying things, which a lot of our friends and peers and, and kindred spirits talk about in general, gamifying things. And New Map, because of its um, its look and its feel, is very playful. So what we were talking about is communicating more the game of planet Earth, Gaia, being a place of fun and joy and abundance and health and wealth, and that the objective of the game for all the players is to create that type of planet to help Gaia realize the vision, what we call the meta vision. Um, we use the word M-E-T-T-A to allude to the meta, like meta overall system, but also the word means loving kindness and friendship and being on the same mental frequency. So the meta vision is for Gaia to thrive. And what New Map is here to do under that paradigm in that context is help all the players co-create and collaborate for that meta vision. So the players would all have their own visions and intentions um, in their own worlds and all the projects and things they want to see manifest. And we would try to figure out how people always have a win-win situation where they're accomplishing the things that they're dreaming of and wanting to see in the world and how that's aligned with Gaia's metavision. And that the health of Gaia is, you know, what's the, in science, like proportionally, directly proportional to each of our, our individual health. So the, the more we share, the more we gift, the more we co-create, we get rewarded with our health, you know, health points or something like that. So the health of, as you see each player's health <laughs> rating go up, you'll see the planetary health go up and vice versa. So that was the main thing that we've been thinking about, um, because that's our intention anyway. Um, as far as the, th the ecosystem and the whole system, so new map is called N-O-O-M-A-P, so in case people wouldn't know that by just listening. And that's based on the noosphere, which is like the mind-like mental layer surrounding the Earth. So yeah, we've already been thinking about what would happen when that noosphere becomes anchored and alive and visible to everybody. It's like the nervous system of Gaia, the noosphere, just to some regards as a metaphor. So that's what we've been thinking as a way to communicate uh, more easily and make it more relatable. Absolutely. I, I fully hear you on that. And that itself relates to a lot of my own work with talking about story and, and the way you, the context you put forth more was the idea of a game. And the game and story are really, really the same thing, uh, as in a game's a more per participatory story. And how so much of our culture, from the ancient epics of Homer to uh, the modern day epics of, of Star Wars, that within this great expanse of mythology, there is this this game unfolding that's been unfolding for a long time and 
you could say the biggest aspect in terms of like spirituality right now is realizing your person in relation to that game, your path, your purpose. But there's this aspect of free will with in terms of how do you want to play? How do you want to move forward? And so, uh, yeah, absolutely, Brett. Fully hear you. Great stuff. Uh, well, we've been getting excited because it opens the door to like bringing in more people who are into gaming and who are into myth and story. And it just feels, it feels more, it feels fun, which is what I think you mentioned the word fun in your video. And I know you have otherwise in other videos, we need to have fun here. We need, we, we need to get excited. We need to have fun. We need to be light. And, um, what could be more fun than a, you know, a game, a co the greatest co-creation game that's been ever played. And that's, that's what we're thinking. Awesome. Well, you, you definitely metaphysically summed up new map beautifully. And uh, every time I hear it, Brett, honestly, the elevator pitch gets way, way better. Uh, and so it's, it's the same with me when I talk Tesla towers or Joe cells or rotating coils is, you know, every pitch, it gets a little bit better. gets a little bit more clear. The audience hears you just a little bit smoother. Yeah. So, that's the, it's been the greatest challenge for us is actually just communicating it. We're bringing it down from, from another place. We're all quite clear. New map is, can be a lot of different things and we want it to be accessible to different people. And we want people to make it their own because we're co-creating it and wanting, we want people to influence it and mold it in, in their own vision. But the three of us, Andrew, myself and Chris are very clear that we're, we're coming from a spiritual perspective and that this is being channeled in from, from the others, from the universe and we're stewards for it. And, um, and I look forward to talking to you again about it and we'll get Chris and Andrea on here. They're actually, they're, they're probably, I'll be a lot more interesting <laughs> to talk to than me in a way because they're really, they're really um, elegant and 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 wise in the way they speak about this subject particularly. So, well, regardless, I want I want all three of you to be regulars on the show. Um, yeah, that'll be for great. For obvious reasons. <laughs> well, thank you, Brett. It's been wonderful and uh, very appreciative of the introduction uh, of New Map to our audience, and uh, I look forward to talking again next time. Cool. Me too, bro. I love you, man. All right. Blessings.